Okay, so we're moving on with the Docker lessons. Now, if you have not seen my last one on how to run a Docker image as a container, you definitely want to catch that or you will feel lost. But if you've watched that, let's move on. So if you're going to be building and running Docker stuff on your machine uh, and it's not Linux, you've got to install boot to Docker. The reason is, so head over to boot to Docker.io uh, and you can install that. It's very simple and painless. Um, the reason is, is Docker sits on top of Linux. It's a Linux tool. It sits on top of the Linux kernel. And so all the Docker containers you run have access to that, those resources. And so you really can't run it on Mac OS or Windows. What you can do is you can run the Docker command in your Mac terminal, and then you can run a virtual machine, which is a really lightweight Linux machine. If you remember from my little graphic I made here, um, we can run a virtual machine, and then when we type Docker run, it's gonna actually run stuff inside of the virtual machine on Mac. It's gonna build our images and run them there. So that's kind of what boot to Docker is. That's how you use it. Go ahead and install it. Um, and you can also, if you use homebrew, you can go brew, install, boot to Docker, and that'll get you going. So you know what's going when, if you can type boot to Docker, um, and you get a list of commands. Okay, boot to Docker is installed. And so that installed the Docker command as well. Um, but I can't go Docker PS because I'm not connected to a Docker daemon. I'm not connected to a Docker machine, and it knows my Mac is not a Docker machine. So what you do is you have two commands. You go boot to Docker up. This is going to boot the Docker virtual machine, the boot to Docker machine on my computer. Um, so you'll have to do this once every time you reboot your computer. It's not really a big deal. It's very lightweight. I don't know what it takes. Just uh, It doesn't take up a whole lot of RAM. Um, so now that that's running, Docker PS still doesn't work because Docker, the Docker command does not know what VM that is. So to get that pointing to your Docker VM, you go boot to Docker shell init. And that will, you wrap it in parens and the dollar sign. That's going to execute, you know, the output of boot to Docker shell in it. So there we go. It's now pointing to my boot to Docker VM. I can go Docker PS and I'm running nothing. Excellent. I'm good to go. And so you do have to run this for every new terminal window you open. So I just copy this command and paste it at the end of my user's bash profile um, file. I paste it at the end of that. So every terminal I open, it tries to connect to the boot to Docker uh, VM. If the boot to Docker VM is not running, then it just, you know, errors out. It doesn't, it's no big deal. So I kind of have that. So it's automatic for me. Um, there you go. Boot to Docker's out of the way. Let's look at actually building our first uh, Docker image. So for this, I have a really simple presentation. I think the easiest way to do, or the easiest example of building a Docker image is serving up static files with Nginx. So let's say we've got this static website here, which I just downloaded HTML5 boilerplate. You know, it's their index HTML, uh, JavaScript, CSS, and I'm just going to use Nginx to serve this up. If you don't know what Nginx is, I have a video on it. I'll put that in the description. It's, it's basically Apache, except for I like it better. <laughs> so I've got this Nginx configuration file and it looks pretty complicated, but here's all, you actually don't even need that. This is all the file has to be for my Nginx configuration. We're going to look for everything in the slash www folder and we're going to serve that as a static website. Now I added some other stuff. I want to do that auto indexing. So if I don't have an index.html, then it's going to, you know, show a list of the files. And then I also, from HTML5 boilerplate server configs, this URL here, um, I also copied a lot of caching. So it'll cache JPEGs and images and all this stuff. So it'll speed up the web website significantly. So here's my Nginx configuration file. So I want to actually build a Docker image that runs Nginx and serves up static files. How do I do that? Um, I create a Docker file and I'm going to say it's from Nginx. So Nginx is basically, they take, I think it's built on Ubuntu. It might not even be Ubuntu. It might be a lighter operating system than that. So it's it basically has Nginx installed and it's exposing port 80. So that's what this base box is, this base configuration. Um, so I'm choosing that as my base and I'm going to make a few changes to that for my image. I'm going to add a few layers on top. I'm going to make a directory called Etsy Nginx logs and I'm going to touch an empty file in there, um, static.log. I have to do this because my caching is going to log to that file. So if that file doesn't exist, my build will fail because Nginx, well, my build will work, but Nginx will never run. It will hang up because it's looking for that log file. Um, the add command 
um, I'm going to add nginx conf to Etsy nginx. This is the directory for all the configuration files. And I'm just going to call it default.conf. I'm going to replace default.conf with my new configuration file. And then I'm just going to add everything from source into slash www, because if you remember, uh, my root is slash www. So that's it. That's literally all the lines you need. I don't have to do expose. 80 because that's already taken care of in my parent image. I could do it again. It'd be no problem. Um, and I also don't have to do command nginx because that's already happening up in my parent file. So nginx is automatically running. Uh, I can get rid of both of you lines. I could add the exposing command just you know for redundancy sake, but I don't have to do it. So let's go ahead now and build this. So now I'm in my folder. Uh, the command is just docker build. And I'm going to tag this. This is basically what my repository name is or what my image name is. Learn Code Academy slash static nginx is what I'll call this. Static nginx. And then I need to show it where's the path to my Docker file. My Docker file is in the folder I'm in, so I just do space dot build. No errors. It's successfully built. Now I can run it. Docker run uh, D. I want to run this in the background, daemon. Um, and then P, let's expose port 80 out to port 80. Uh, and then let's go, um, what's the name of that? It's Learn Code Academy. Man, that's a long username. Slash uh, static nginx. There we go. It's running. And so I can go Docker PS. And it's running. So how do I get to it? I can't go to localhost because my Docker VM has its own IP. So I actually have to go boot to Docker IP. There you go, that's the IP address of my virtual machine. I'm going to add this to my hosts file because I don't want to have to remember that every time. Let's come down here. Uh, let's call this boot to docker.me. There we go. So now boot to docker.me is my virtual machine. I should be able to go to boot to docker.me and port 80 is default. So there you go. Hello world, this is HTML5 boilerplate. Awesome, so kind of the workflow for a redeploy on this guy is let's say I tweet some changes. Hello world, this is me. Let's save it. Beautiful, love it. Let's go docker build. I can actually just kind of tab up through my commands. Docker build, let's re-tag it. It built it, and then let's go docker stop static. Did I name it? I thought I named it, yeah, docker stop. Whoop. Yeah, I didn't name it, so it's tender feynman. Stop you, remove you, and then let's run. I'll go up through my commands. Run that. I knew I forgot a flag. There's always a flag. Um, we'll just call this guy static. There we go. So I'm running it again. Now, for local workflow, you don't want to do that. There you go. Hello world, this is me. So my Docker container is working. It's beautiful. I can deploy this guy. Um, I wouldn't want to do that for a local workflow, clearly, because you don't want to have to go through all that every time you make a change, especially for static HTML. I'm just going to run something like live server, um, which is an NPM package. I have a quick video on that. And then I got live reloading and everything. And only when I like this, when I'm happy with, um, there you go, this is me, also me. There we go. That's live reloading, much faster, much easier workflow. Once I'm happy with my website, that's when I build it, that's when I deploy it. So you're saying, okay, how do I deploy this guy? I liked what I did, let's build it again. Docker build, let's build it. Well then all you do at that point is you just go Docker push. Um, and assuming you've done a login, Docker login, assuming you logged in with your credentials on your machine, just push learn code academy static nginx. There you go, and that's going to send the image list. Um, and this will take, depending on how many, how big your image is and what all changes you've made, this might take 30 seconds, it might take a minute. Um, there you go, it's going pretty quickly. Um, and then once that's pushed, on any other machine I can run it. So I'm going to go ahead and log into, let's go ahead and log into ssh root at docker.me, which is my production server, if you'll remember. Uh, let's go back over here. Okay, there we go, it pushed. I skipped ahead about 20 seconds because I didn't want to make you all wait in silence. So it has pushed, and now I can go docker run p8080 uh, d name static learn code academy. 
Ah, bike type. Static engine X. Man, I hope I typed everything right. Okay, there we go. Exact same thing. And so it's going to pull all the images. It's going to do it much faster because I'm not on my local machine. I'm on digital ocean right now. So it's going to pull all these images really quick. And I should have my first deployment running in just a matter of moments. I didn't have to install Nginx on my server. I didn't have to install Apache on my web server. Absolutely nothing is installed. I'm just running my image as a container. Okay, there we go. Let's see what docker.me looks like. Docker.me. And there you go. There's my fully deployed website. I can run this image on staging, production, anywhere and everywhere. And so that's kind of my first Docker build. It's not too much harder to build something for a Node.js app or for a Ruby on Rails app. It's it's all in that Docker file. And in the next video, I'll probably get into a Node.js app or something. So hope you have a great day.